Hey there, pilots! This is Dauntless Sam, and today we'll be looking at the history of the Grumman TBF Avenger and its flight characteristics in War Thunder. The Grumman TBF Avenger was a torpedo bomber developed initially for the United States Navy and Marine Corps, and eventually used by several air or naval arms around the world. The Avenger entered U.S. service in 1942 and first saw action during the Battle of Midway. Despite the loss of five of the six Avengers on its combat debut, it survived in service to become one of the outstanding torpedo bombers of World War II. Greatly modified after the war, it remained in use until the 1960s. Douglas's TBD Devastator, the U.S. Navy's main torpedo bomber introduced in 1935, was obsolete by 1939. Bids were accepted from several companies, but Grumman's TBF design was selected as the TBD's replacement, and two prototypes were ordered by the Navy in April of 1942. Designed by Leroy Grumman, the first prototype was called the XTBF-1. It was flown on the 7th of August, 1941. Although one of the first two prototypes crashed near Brentwood, New York, rapid production continued. Grumman's first torpedo bomber was the heaviest single-engined aircraft of World War II, and only the United States Army Air Force's P-47 Thunderbolt came close to equaling its maximum loaded weight among all single-engined fighters, being only some 400 pounds lighter than the TBF by the end of World War II. The Avenger was the first design to feature new compound angle wing folding mechanisms created by Grumman, intended to maximize storage space on an aircraft carrier. The F-4F-4 and later models of the Wildcat received similar folding wings and the F-6F Hellcat, both designed by Grumman, employed this mechanism as well. The engine used was the Wright R-2600-20 Cyclone 14 twin-row radial engine, which produced 1900 horsepower. The aircraft took 25 gallons of oil and used one gallon per minute at startup. There were three crew members, the pilot, turret gunner, and the radio man slash bombardier slash ventral gunner. One 30 caliber machine gun was mounted in the nose. A 50 caliber machine gun was mounted right next to the turret gunner's head in a rear-facing electrically powered turret, and a single 30 caliber hand-fired machine gun mounted ventrally under the tail, which was used to defend against enemy fighter attacks from below and to the rear. This gun was fired by the radio man slash bombardier while standing up and bending over the belly of the tail section, though he usually sat on a folding bench facing forward to operate the radio and to sight in bombing runs. Later models of the TBF dispensed with the nose-mounted gun for one 50 caliber gun in each wing per pilot's request for better forward firepower and increasing strafing ability. There was only one set of controls on the aircraft, and no access to the pilot's position from the rest of the aircraft. The radio equipment was massive, especially by today's standards, and filled the whole glass canopy to the rear of the pilot. The radios were accessible for repair through a tunnel along the right-hand side. Any Avengers that are still flying today usually have an additional rear-mounted seat in place of the radios, allowing for a fourth passenger. The Avenger had a large bomb bay, allowing for one Bliss Leavitt Mark 13 torpedo, a single 2,000-pound bomb, or up to four 500-pound bombs. The aircraft had an overall ruggedness and stability, and pilots say it flew like a truck, for better or worse. With its good radio facilities, docile handling, and long range, the Grumman Avenger also made an ideal command aircraft for Commander's Air Group. With a 30,000-foot ceiling and a fully loaded range of 1,000 miles, it was better than any previous American torpedo bomber, and better than its Japanese counterpart, the obsolete Nakajima B-5N Kate. Later Avenger models also carried radar equipment. Although improvements in new types of aviation radar were soon forthcoming from the engineers at MIT and the electronics industry, the available radars in 1943 were very bulky because they contained vacuum tube technology. Because of this, radar was first carried only by the Rutmi TBF Avengers, but not on the smaller and faster fighters. Escort carrier sailors referred to the TBF as the Turkey because of its size and maneuverability in comparison to the F-4F Wildcat fighters in the CVE air groups. On the afternoon of December 7, 1941, Grumman held a ceremony to open a new manufacturing plant and display the new TBF to the public. Coincidentally, on that day, 
the Imperial Japanese Navy attacked Pearl Harbor, as soon Grumman found out. After the ceremony was over, the plant was quickly sealed off to guard against possible sabotage. By early June 1942, a shipment of more than 100 aircraft was sent to the Navy, ironically arriving only a few hours after the three carriers quickly departed from Pearl Harbor, so most of them were too late to participate in the pivotal Battle of Midway. Six TBF Avengers were present on Midway Island as part of the Torpedo Squadron 8, while the rest of the squadron flew Devastators from the Hornet. Unfortunately, both types of torpedo bombers suffered heavy casualties. Out of the six Avengers, five were shot down, and the other gunner and the pilot injured. Nonetheless, the U.S. torpedo bombers were credited with drawing away the Japanese air combat air patrols so that American dive bombers could successfully hit the Japanese carriers. Some think that the outdated devastators and lack of new aircraft contributed somewhat to the lack of a complete victory at Midway. Others pointed out that the inexperienced American pilots and lack of fighter cover were responsible for the poor showing of the U.S. torpedo bombers, regardless of type. Later in the war, with improving American air superiority, attack coordination, and more veteran pilots, Avengers were able to play vital roles in subsequent battles against Japanese surface forces. On August 24, 1942, the next major naval battle occurred at the Eastern Solomons. Based on this carrier Saratoga and Enterprise, the 24 TBFs present were able to sink the Japanese light carrier Ryujo and claim one dive bomber at the cost of seven aircraft. The first major prize for the TBFs, which had been assigned the name Avenger in October 1941, before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, was at the Naval Battle of Guadalcanal in November 1942, when Marine Corps and Navy Avengers helped sink the battleship Hawaii, which had already been crippled the night before. After hundreds of the original TBF-1 models were built, the TBF-1C began production. The allotment of space for specialized internal and wing-mounted fuel tanks doubled the Avengers' range. By 1943, Grumman began to slowly phase out the production of the Avenger to produce F-6F Hellcat fighters, and the Eastern Aircraft Division of General Motors took over production, with these aircraft being designated TBM. The Eastern Aircraft Plant was located in Terrytown, New York. Grumman delivered a TBF-1 held together with sheet metal screws so that the automotive engineers could disassemble it a part at a time and redesign the aircraft for automotive-style production. This aircraft was known as the PK Avenger. Starting in mid-1944, the TBM-3 began production, with a more powerful power plant and wing hardpoints for drop tanks and rockets. The Dash-3 was the most numerous of the Avengers, with about 4,600 produced. However, most of the Avengers in service were Dash-1s until near the end of the war in 1945. Besides the traditional surface role, torpedoing surface ships, Avengers claimed about 30 submarine kills, including the cargo submarine I-52. They were the most effective sub-killers in the Pacific Theater as well as the Atlantic, when escort carriers were finally available to escort Allied convoys. There, the Avengers contributed to warding off German U-boats while providing air cover for the convoys. After the Marianas turkey shoot, in which more than 250 Japanese aircraft were downed, Admiral Mark Mitzer ordered a 220 aircraft mission to find the Japanese task force. At the extreme end of their range, at the extreme end of their range, 300 nautical miles, the group of Hellcats, TBF and TBMs, and dive bombers took many casualties. However, Avengers from the Independence-class light aircraft carrier USS Bellow Wood torpedoed the light carrier Hyo as their only major prize. Mr.'s gamble did not pay off as well as he had hoped. In June 1943, future President George H.W. Bush became the youngest naval aviator at the time. While flying a TBM with VT-51, his TBM was shot down on September 2, 1944 over the Pacific island of Chichijima. Both of his crewmates died. However, he released his payload and hit the target before being forced to bail out. He received the Distinguished Flying Cross. Another famous Avenger aviator was Paul Newman, who flew as a rear gunner. He also hoped to be accepted for pilot training, 
but did not qualify because of being colorblind. Newman was on board the escort carrier Hollandia, roughly 500 miles from Japan, when the Enola Gay dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. The Avenger was the type of torpedo bomber used during the sinking of the two Japanese super battleships. The Avenger was also used by the Royal Navy's fleet air arm, where it was initially known as the Tarpon. However, this name was later discontinued and the Avenger name used instead, as part of the process of the fleet air arm universally adopting U.S. Navy names for American naval aircraft. The first 402 aircraft were known as Avenger Mark I. 334 TBM-1s from Grumman were the Avenger Mark II, and 334 TBM-3s the Mark III. The only other operator in World War II was the Royal New Zealand Air Force, which used the type primarily as a bomber, operating from South Pacific Island bases. Some of these were transferred to the British Pacific Fleet. During World War II, the United States Aeronautical Research Arm, NACA, used a complete Avenger in a comprehensive drag reduction study in their large Langley wind tunnel. The resulting NACA technical report shows the impressive results available if practical aircraft did not have to be practical. In 1945, Avengers were involved in pioneering trials of aerial top dressing in New Zealand that led to the establishment of an industry which markedly increased food production and efficiency in farming worldwide. Pilots of the Royal New Zealand Air Force's 42nd Squadron spread fertilizer from Avengers beside runways at an airbase and provided a demonstration for farmers at Hood Aerodrome, Masterton, New Zealand. The post-war disappearance of a flight of American Avengers, known as Flight 19, was later added to the Bermuda Triangle legend. 100 USN TBM-3Es were supplied to the Fleet Air Arm in 1953 under the U.S. Mutual Defense Assistance Program. The aircraft were shipped from Norfolk, Virginia, many aboard the Royal Navy aircraft carrier, the HMS Perseus. The Avengers were fitted with British equipment by Scottish Aviation and delivered as the Avenger AS-4 to several FAA squadrons. The aircraft were replaced from 1954 by ferry gannets and were passed to squadrons of the Royal Navy Reserve. The survivors were transferred to the French Navy in 1957 to 1958. One of the primary post-war uses of the Avengers was the Royal Canadian Navy, which obtained 125 former U.S. Navy TBM-3E Avengers from 1950 to 1952 to replace their vulnerable fairy fireflies. By the time the Avengers were delivered, the RCN was shifting its primary focus to anti-submarine warfare, and the aircraft was rapidly becoming obsolete as an attack platform. Consequently, 98 of the RCN Avengers were fitted with an extensive number of novel anti-submarine warfare modifications, including radar, electronic countermeasure equipment, and sono buoys and the upper ball turret was replaced with a sloping glass canopy that was better suited for observation duties. The modified Avengers were designated AS-3. A number of these aircraft were later fitted with large magnetic anomaly detector booms on the rear left side of the fuselage, and redesignated AS-3M. However, RCN leaders soon realized the Avengers' shortcomings as an anti-submarine warfare aircraft and in 1954, they elected to replace the AS-3 with the Grumman S-2 Tracker, which offered longer range, greater load-carrying capacity for electronics and armament, and a second engine, a great safety benefit when flying long-range anti-submarine warfare patrols over frigid North Atlantic waters. As delivery of the new license-built CS-2F trackers began in 1957, the Avengers were shifted to training duties and were officially retired in July of 1960. TBF Avengers were used in wartime research into counter-illumination camouflage. The torpedo bombers were fitted with UD lights, a set of forward-pointing lights automatically adjusted to match the brightness of the sky. The planes therefore appeared to as bright as the sky, rather than as dark shapes. The technology 
a development of the Canadian's Navy, diffused lighting camouflage research, allowed an Avenger to advance within 3,000 yards before being seen. Many Avengers have survived into the 21st century working as spray applicators and water bombers throughout North America, particularly in the Canadian province of New Brunswick. Forest Protection Limited of Fredericton, New Brunswick once owned and operated the largest civilian fleet of Avengers in the world. Forest Protection Limited began operating Avengers in 1958 after purchasing 12 surplus TBM-3E aircraft from the Royal Canadian Navy. Use of the Avenger fleet at FPL peaked in 1971 when 43 aircraft were used as both water bombers and spray aircraft. The company sold three Avengers in 2004 to museums or private collectors. The Central New Brunswick Woodsman Museum has a former FPL Avenger on static display. An FPL Avenger that crashed in 1975 in southwestern New Brunswick was recovered and restored by a group of interested aviation enthusiasts and is currently on display at Atlantic Canada Aviation Museum. FPL was still operating three Avengers in 2010 configured as water bombers. One of these crashed just after takeoff on April 23, 2010, killing the pilot. The last FPL Avenger was retired on July 26, 2012, and sold to the Shearwater Aviation Museum in Dartsmouth, Nova Scotia. There are several other Avengers in private collections around the world today. They are a popular airshow fixture in both flying and static displays. In War Thunder, there is one version of the Avenger. It is a rank 2 aircraft with a battle rating of 2.3. It has a maximum speed of 362 km per hour, a turn time of 32.8 seconds, and a rate of climb of 5.2 meters per second. The Avenger has a primary armament of two 50 caliber Browning machine guns with 1200 rounds and is defended by one dorsal turret armed with one 50 caliber Browning machine gun with 400 rounds and one waist turret armed with a 30 caliber Browning machine gun with 500 rounds. The Avenger can also be loaded with either four 500 pound bombs, one 1,005 kilogram torpedo, or one 1,005 kilogram improved torpedo. The Avenger is much different than the Dauntless is not a dive bomber and does not maneuver as well as the previous aircraft in the tech tree. Its increased bomb load allows for more effective destruction of ground targets, and while the defensive armaments of the aircraft won't scare any enemy aircraft away, it will certainly chew through anyone on your tail. I hope that this information has proved helpful. If you liked the video, please do like the video. If you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and if you think anyone else would be interested in this video, don't be afraid to share it. This is Dauntless Sam. Thanks for watching.